Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. All right, curling fans, buckle up. We've got a show for you. Colleen, you ready to rock? You know what? I, I love last night's show so much and the four tissue tears I had. I think we should just roll last night's show, don't you think? Well, we could do that, but we have a yeah. show tonight. Um, I just I just tweeted out Roll Call. You retweeted it. Hello, curling fans. Thanks for tuning in again. It's a all-Quebec show tonight. Colleen, how's your French? Oh, très bien, merci. Et vous? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my last name's French, but I don't speak yeah. French very well. Maybe I'll try it. But, you know, this Quebec team, how about the Quebec team? The uh, he, Chelsea, Gary, Team Flurry, we're calling them Team Flurry. What a huge win. And we have Skipper Laurie St. George joining us today. What do you like about this team call? I like everything about this team. I fell in love with this team when they lost the Canadian Junior Final right. that in 2018. And they had that heartwarming moment between the two sisters as uh, Laurie comforted uh, her little sister. And now I love their, um, what's the word? Confidence. Their joie de vivre. Their, that, and you said you couldn't speak <laughs> She's, um, Lori is making all the key shots at all the right time. She is showing no fear. And frankly, in, in, in young curlers, that's, that's hard to do uh, because you are a little bit nervous in your first Scotties. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. But that, that, boy, the other big game today, though, uh, was cool. Saskatchewan, Manitoba. I mean, that was a huge one in the standings. You had Jenny Jones at two and one, Saskatchewan at one and one. They had the day off yesterday. There were a lot of misses, Colleen. There were a lot of misses, although Jennifer Jones had a spectacular game to keep her team in it. And then, you know, a little miscue in the 10th end, and uh, Sherry Anderson was uh, taking that win. And you Sherry. Sherry's really recovered nicely, but you know, Jones now she's got Newfoundland and Labrador and Hill is playing really confidently. I like the look of that young team as well. Okay, well, while we hold on, I want to jump in. Can we put up the board so sure. producer extraordinaire? Let's put up the standings to remind everybody where we're at. But go ahead, Colleen. I mean, what a granite yeah. quagmire in pool B. It is, and I call that the pool of death. I always looked at that and said that because of Burt and Anderson was just, and Brown, I, I had a lot of confidence in Brown coming in this. I thought this was the tough, tough pool. And now people will argue pool A, maybe time, I mean, whatever. I mean, no one's in Anderson and Holman are in a class of their own. Right. But right. anyhow, you look at Jennifer now at two and two, and she has yeah. Newfoundland and Labrador tomorrow, and then PEI, and she finishes with New Brunswick and Nunavut. So that should be two guaranteed wins for the stretch. But I'll tell you, she might have her hands full with Newfoundland and Labrador, and especially Suzanne Burt, because- well, I mean, you, we, we always look at the draw schedule and everybody says free spaces on the bingo card, but I think we're seeing already there are no free spaces. Let, let's get into it. Let's get into this Quebec team because they are exciting. I know everybody, a lot of people tuning in to see Laurie St. George, uh, steely eyed, so calm, big shot for three against Chelsea Carey and that squad. Let's take a look at that, a big shot today. Chelsea Carey was trying to draw around on her final to lie two and just grazed a stone and rolled into the open, but she has set a double and an opportunity for three. And she told us yesterday when we talked to her, she is an aggressive. Yes. Sister. She loves to play aggressively. But is it, it's not silly aggressive, is it? No. Oh, and moved it. Look at that. Moves it far enough. Three, yes. And there it is. Three, oh, well, it is. That one. Is that a yep, yep, yep. Three yellow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's a great shot for three. Oh, it's so nice to actually watch. <laughs> and then how about that draw in the last end against three? I mean, I have I have the two perfect sweepers on my team, so <laughs> I couldn't ask for more. <laughs> what were you thinking when you threw that shot, that double against Chelsea Carey, no less? I mean, it's kind of just an open hit and you have to hit it at the right spot and that's it with the right weight. So, I mean. You make it sound easy, Lori. I mean, <laughs> I, I like throwing these shots. So 
Yeah, I mean, it was not an easy shot, obviously, and we were trying to stick it for three, but the main goal it was to make the double for, for two. But thank God we stick it. <laughs> yeah. Now, one, one question. Let me just get out of the shot for a second and bring out my, my – look. Look who's on top. Look. The other way. Right well, there. I know. <laughs> it's so nice. Did, did you think you'd be there when you came into the Scotties? We had actually no expectations, honestly. Mm. We were just coming here, playing our games, having fun and enjoy, soak it all in. And hey, we're actually pre- playing good. <laughs> I'm actually playing my, my best event and my only event of the year. So it's pretty amazing. That is remarkable. And you've got your sister on the team. Your dad is the coach. Tell me about this team and tell me about the frozen swimming pool. Uh, you guys seem to have a ton of fun. Everybody's loving you across this country. So just tell us a little bit about the team and how much fun you guys are having in the pool preparation. Oh, I love this picture. <laughs> it's so nice. Um, obviously, uh, me and Emily, uh, as I said before, uh, we were actually able to practice at Glenmore Curling Club um, in Paris. So we were able to practice. Um, my sister, yes, yeah, she she actually slid in, in the pool in the back, uh, my parents' backyard. Yeah, there that's it is. Amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And the ice was great. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks to Michelle, honestly. Um, so yeah, we. Honestly, we prepared ourselves um, with mental prep, physical prep, nutrition. We we had a lot of Zoom meetings uh, talking about um, how we wanted to communicate on the ice. And, and uh, yeah, honestly, we're just here having fun, enjoying the moment. And I think that's why we're actually performing right now. So, yeah, there's actually no pressure. We just want to throw some team shots and make some team shots. Oh, beautiful. That, just remember that what you just said, because that's so important going forward. Yeah. Just real quick, I, you guys are having a lot of fun. You can tell. Here's a post-game interview. Let's take a look at that. I think it might have been after your huge comeback against PEI. Let's take a look. Yeah. I mean, I think with our energy, we don't need a crew. Um, but, yeah, honestly, we're just – having so much fun we're just enjoying and we still have crowd like my dog is out there watching me my sister's cat is still there my mom with the cutouts yeah um and yeah just the feeling to play at the scotties yeah. it's 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 more it's than a feeling energy. yeah it's it's such a good feeling so you, yeah you laugh but this is how we play in like a yeah. club in a club game too we have yeah. this much energy so and you know we've never been to this guy before, so we don't know what it's like to not have a crowd. So yeah, exactly. You know, we're able to boost ourselves up for sure. Wow, so good! It's so such good. a nice game, curling. Eh? It's such a beautiful game. Oh. It is a beautiful game, especially that you get to share it with your family too. Now, at Curl Rockstars, your Twitter handle. What kind of feedback are you hearing from? I'm sure your growing legion of fans. Yeah, well. I- I look like Frozen, do you think? Oh, I mean, we, 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 have, we were ready for this. Producer, look at this. <laughs> you do look like Elsa. Uh, yeah. I always, I always thought that was a pretty inspiring curling movie. Thank well, you. you know, uh, Laurie, Colleen was practicing the song before the show. She probably doesn't know it. <laughs> I, I actually don't know it, but I have to to actually learn it. So. Well, it's let it go, right? Which I always thought was just the best when after you lose a game, you listen to um, oh, yeah. the Frozen theme song, let it go, you know, yes. and you let it go eventually. <laughs> um, okay, so what are you looking forward to next? And, 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 you know, you talked a little bit about not knowing what it's like to play with the crowd there. Is that an advantage for you, not having people go, ooh, if you miss a shot? Um. I think so, maybe. Um, honestly, we don't really see a difference because we're just playing our game, uh, honestly. So I don't think there is a difference, but for sure it's um, it's more calm on the ice, right? Well, I'm, I'm not really calm on the ice. I'm pretty intense. I'm making a lot of noise. But still, um, uh, we can actually hear each other, uh, communicate well. So, yeah, I think it's maybe an advantage for us to not have a big crowd uh, screaming. 
Yeah. You know what? There's something about Quebec teams and the energy they bring on the ice. So I know we have Guy Hemmings later on in the show. And I will just never forget his enthusiasm all the time. And yeah. there's so many um, great Quebec teams that just brought that. So that, that must inspire you a bit, too. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, Gaming, such a great player. Honestly, it's, he has this energy. It's incredible, right? And he knows what to do. <laughs> he's good at it. And he's really confident. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. for inspiring. Yeah. Uh, to that point, Lori, who would you who would you model your game after? I tweeted out before the show, uh, Shades of Marie France and LaRouche. Uh, what, who would you watch growing up in Quebec? Who were your idols? For sure, I think it's it was uh, Marie France LaRouche. Honestly, um, I I love her style of play, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, I I don't think I've already played against her. Uh, I wish, though, because she's such a good player and her energy on the ice is so nice. So, yeah, I would say Marie-France Larouche, she was uh, my idol when I was younger. Yeah, for sure. Mm, I used to love playing against her. Tell me, um, how will you, how will Dad prepare you guys t tonight? Oh, um, honestly, we, we're just doing, like, pep talks and, I don't know, we're just... Honestly, we, we don't we don't do a lot of big meetings, right? Like we 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 kind of like to simplify things. Yeah. Um so honestly, I think the key is just enjoy. Honestly, for for a team is is just enjoy and keep calm and breathe, 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 and you know, shot against four. Just breathe and you're gonna make it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I have a feeling, I have a feeling this is just a beginning. I know fans across the country, Laurie, are saying we're excited not only for the rest of the week, but for the years to come. And I'm so glad you're on the show tonight. Uh, yeah. You're becoming the story. Everybody's yeah. loving you. So good luck the rest of the way. Yeah. And Lori, someday when you're going to the Olympic Games, we want when Devin and I are with you, and if you tell us we have meetings, we have this, we have that, we have this, we have that, we're going to tell you to cut it out. Right. Cross Let it go. Cross Let it go. I'm awesome. <laughs> okay. See you. Good Trust luck, Lori. Bon chance. Bon chance. Love you. Merci. Merci. Au revoir. A tout à l'heure. Awesome. Au revoir. Wow. Yeah. And you know what? I'm thinking back at that Canadian junior final they lost a couple of years ago, and it's just a really good message to all junior curlers out there that there are always tough losses and it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's a blip and you learn from it like this team has learned and you become stronger. You it's let it go. Okay, that's enough singing. That's enough call. Um, it's a long week and, it, and it's a long career, right? Um, yeah. The fan portion of the show. We got to keep it moving because yeah. we also got to fit in Guy Hemming's schedule. He's got games to call. He's going to close the show out tonight. Yeah. But uh, but we're going to get to in the house with the fans. This is such a fun thing we love to do. And I understand we have Brenda joining the show tonight. There's Brenda. Brenda, how are you? Where are you? How much are you enjoying this year, Scotties? Yeah. So I'm. Uh... I'm on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of um, the Scugog, which is also Durham region or Pickering. And um, it's amazing. I mean, I'm wearing my, I'm gonna have to sit back a bit or stand up, but I'm wearing my Scotty's jacket awesome. from Kingston when um, I volunteered in Kingston. Nice, um, I love that. Yeah, and so that's when I got my picture, Colleen, with you. Um, and so, um, yeah, just what, what a gift it is to be able to, to mm -hmm. see the country come together um, because of curling. I always marvel at that, you know, and, and, and I've been lucky enough as a curler to travel to just about every single corner of it and not the big cities. I mean, I'm, I've been to Brandon more than most people. I've been to Fort McMurray and Prince George and all points in between. Uh, and you just enjoy the vibe in, yeah. in small town Canada or small cities like Kingston. Kingston's sort of a big Yes, city. well, I learned, I'll share this. I was thinking about, okay, like, so when I was in Edmonton, I actually took a six week course at the Seville Sports Center nice. to learn how to curl. And so, you know, a small group of us, we learned the 
fundamentals of curling because I've watched it for so long with my dad and but I've never had the opportunity to play so I thought oh I'm gonna go learn so then when I moved back to Kingston I joined the Royal Kingston Curling Club which is the oldest right. curling club and so you know just um yeah it's such a special game I thought the Halifax Curling Club was the oldest curling club uh -oh. am I wrong maybe I'm I'm uh oh. Like one of those. To, no, no, you're okay. You're you're probably close. You know. Um, okay. So our, our big question. Right. Our question of the day. Yeah. Which teams impressed you so far at the Scotties, Brenda? Well, I think. I mean, we just talked to Lori. Team Team Quebec is doing phenomenal. They've mm. always they've always brought yeah such energy um, for both men and women, but for the Scotties specifically. Um, I mean, Rachel Holman is doing fantastic. Her team. I mean, they're always competitors when they when they show up. Um, Saskatchewan. I yes. I love Saskatchewan. They. So when do I, I. Host, I do. I love them. They're down to earth, and they're just they're just they're really, um, you know, just and everything they've walked through in the last mm, you know little so bit, like just that resilience that they show. I think is just so it's so special. It really is. Brenda, last couple of things before before we move on yeah. with the show. Um, I, do, do you have the 2010 yeah, Olympic, right here. Uh, Olympic ticket? Yeah. Show us, Can tell you, us real quickly. I've got to go back. There you go. There yeah. you go. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Good work. Yeah, and it's signed by the guys. This is the the gold medal team. Nice. Um, yeah, so I was living, I was living in Vancouver um, and working and um doing volunteer work with the cultural Olympiad. And I just was like, I have to be there. And so like the morning of was like searching for tickets. A friend of mine, I phoned him up and I said, Hey, we're going, we're going to the gold medal game. And so we hiked it. We hiked it on the sky train downtown, um, went to get the tickets. Um, literally like the guy gave us the wrong envelope to start with. And oh. so I had to like run back. And then we had to like run to the to the curling rink. But let me tell you something: like to watch Kevin and his team oh. in Vancouver. Like I was like, listen, there's the there's hockey, but then there's curling. And I'm gonna tell people I was at the gold medal curling game in Vancouver. So cool. awesome. Uh, he showed up too. So I there was that. Well, he knows his priorities. Brenda, do you want to take a quick photo of all of us on the screen? I know you said you hadn't got a photo uh, of all of us together. Yeah, the three. That's right. Yeah. That's there you and go, Devin. You, now, now it's like legit, right? And then now you it's legit. You see it out with the three. Let's get yourself in the shot. How bad is that? There we go. There we go. We got okay. it, Brenda. Okay. Thank you that out. We'll retweet. Good to Bye, see guys. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank nice you so much. And thank awesome. you for doing this. You're bringing the country together. You know, it's oh. really special in such a tough time for a lot of people. It's it's amazing to see how this game and your love for it is really uniting us. Thank oh. you, Brenda. Okay. That's so Thanks, guys. I said I was only crying last night, and now she's going to make me cry tonight. What? A yeah, and we thanks, gotta, Sophie. We got to bring the tears. Okay, bye, Brenda. Sophie's great. Bye. Uh, of course, we're talking about 2010 Olympic gold for Canada, and we also got to talk about what happened in Pyeongchang, Colleen, because you and I were there. We had a front row seat to it, and I know Paul Webster, the national coach with Curling Canada, was also there, and he joins us now. You're Paul, you're in Calgary, are you not? I am, yeah. Actually, uh, COP Wind Sports, like 10 minutes from my house here, but I'm not in the bubble. There's the, you know, I, I tried to find a reason for me to get in there and watch some of the best curling ever, but uh, you know, there's no, it's not used to uh, taking that risk for sure. You know, Paul, we're kind of relieved that if you're, if you're not allowed in, then we really shouldn't be allowed in because we want it to be in the bubble. Yeah, but there you go. Everybody, all the fans wanted to be in the bubble. How are you, Paul? Do you know, Devin, fun fact, um, Paul and I called a curling game together. What was that in 2010? No, that was 2014 Olympic semifinal. I get a call that morning from Mike Harris saying, hey, We've got an opportunity to do the other semifinal. Can you help out? And but it was supposed to be in a studio. And I'm like, I have to be in the arena in case there's an emergency. Um, but what a great distraction. Yeah. And then they, they call us 
And they're like, and you're going to do it with Colleen Jones. I'm like, well, that's that's easy, right? <laughs> and I remember rushing in. I never just, show up. just show I, up and hold on. Okay. I just remember, honestly, I still have nightmares about it. I remember rushing in, and we're going we're gonna to pre-record the opening. And, of course, Colleen, as professional as she is, runs it off. And now I have my spot, and I mess it up like three, four times. Basically, like, it's okay, Paul. We'll just do it live. And I think we got on the last take, thank God. And then we were able to sort of smoothly go into the game. I have a feeling you could have handled live just fine. Okay. Sure you could. Yeah. Hey, Paul, let's let's talk about it because I know uh, with all these moving parts in the midst of a pandemic, everybody's been concerned. Is there enough time to get Canada up to speed to take on the world at the next games? Because I don't have to tell you what happened in Pyeongchang. So where are we at? What's going on behind the scenes to get Canada ready? We've always talked about the world catching up. They're here and Canada's got to step up. Yeah, in that light too, Devin, it's exactly where we want to be as a sport. Like we want competitiveness, right? Uh, now with COVID and so on, it's uh, it's definitely threw a wrench into everyone's plans. Um, you know, selfishly, we're looking at Canada's plans. It, it's changed a lot. Um, and, you know, working with the Canadian Olympic Committee, they've been extremely patient with our sport, but many others in, in letting us um, sort of choose the direction of, of where our play downs will take place. As most fans know, the Canadian team ranking system is a huge part of our Olympic trials process. Well, we've wiped out an entire year. Um, so we've able to, we've been able to, you saw probably a press release a couple weeks ago uh, talking about how we're having, you know, the, the pre-trials and the trials. And now we've got the uh, pre-qualifier to the Olympic trials. We like to call that the side door to the roar, right? And it's, um, so the, the teams have been really understanding. Um, they've been involved in the process. Um, Jeff Stout and Scott Pfeiffer, Elaine, Dag Jackson have all been behind the scenes of working up. We want to make sure it's the, it's an integral process that includes everyone. Um, and then we're just hopeful that September allows us to play events. Um, and, and kudos to uh, Nolan Thiessen, Danny Lamoureux over there in Windsport, putting that event together um, with the leadership of Catherine Henderson. Um, you know, cross her fingers. Uh, everything's going well over there. Um, and that will, that will allow us to run these other events and then possibly allow us to run events in the fall as well. I've never had to cross my fingers so much in the whole show. Mm -hmm. Everybody's crossing their fingers today. Yeah. But, you know, curling's such a slippery game. Is I, I mean, I know the other countries are, are catching up, but it's not like Canada's really missed a step. Right. Sometimes if you can look back at Pyeongchang and, and go, oh, it was just that end or this moment or this change of direction in a game. I mean, it's such a slippery game sometimes, as we saw in this afternoon's draw, by the way. It's so true, Colleen, and, and it is like, you know, looking at Cooey's team and Holman's team, they came, they played extremely well, right? And we look back at some of those steps, there's a missed shot or two, and now we're talking about uh, podium. And again, knowing that it's semifinal finals, it's just that semifinal getting in there and winning it. And uh, then you're in the gold medal game and you're guaranteed a silver. Um, but honestly, we relish this opportunity to, to look at what those other countries are doing. We don't want Olympics where we, we know we're going in winning a gold or silver. Um, we want to make sure we're competing. We want to work hard. And honestly, you know, you look at uh, Jeff and Elaine and Scott running our three major programs. They're working hard with our athletes and, the, and the, all the team coaches um, to make up those gaps and, and figure out where those gaps are, how we address them, and, um, and make sure we're ready for 2022 in Beijing. How cool is it to see these youngins is here at the Scotties? Um, so the two wildcard teams, Zacharias and Peterson, even though this is sort of a new experience for them and, and um, uh, they've had a few struggles in tough games. And now you see Quebec Saint-Georges. Um, how exciting would it be to somehow make sure young teams like that with maybe not enough experience still get that, what did you call it? The slide into the roar. The well, that, that's really, if you think about our pre-trials, that's why we have our pre-trials, really, is to give our younger developing teams that Olympic spin on an event. Now, if you look at the history of the pre-trials, we have a ton of teams um, right. getting from pre-trials in the Olympics. Like, you look yep. at Morris Jacobs that one year, I think they played in the final of the trials, yep. right? In 2013, they both came out of the pre-trials. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, those. it's funny that we're talking about John Morris and, and Brad Jacobs in that young sense. Um, but teams like Zacharias and, and St. George from Quebec, um, these events um, are where they, they get their bruises and their experience. I remember back, we had a camp back in 2005, and Randy Furby was there, and he's coaching right now this week. And one of the lines he told us was, you know, the, told us more of the athletes. And in that, in that group of athletes was, 
was Brad Jacobs, Mark Kennedy, Ben Heber, John Morris, all these young kids at the time. And he said, you know, the question I'm glad people don't ask me is what events have you lost? Wow. He goes, because I've lost them all. Um, mm -hmm. And now at that point, think of 2005 with Team Furby, they were winning everything, mm -hmm. right? Well, they, the message was you got to get in those events first and you got to learn how to win them. And part of learning how to win them is unfortunately a few losses along the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was at the Briar, they lost in that heartbreaker Pat when he was coming with Pat Ryan. And I was in the locker room with them afterwards. To, and that was a top. Who they lose to? Hackner, I'm going to say. Back in the 80s, Devin, were you born? Nope. And we yeah. got to keep her moving. Paul, one last quick question for yeah. you. Do you feel any more pressure than than any other time going into next Olympics? I get you. Yeah, you have to admit, yeah, like we want to get on the podium. We, we expect to be there, but we know there's hard work to get there. And we, we're, uh, we're ready and willing to do that hard work. And I'm excited watching these teams play this week and next. And and I know they're finally excited to get back on the ice with a really big event in their hat. And, you know, Canada's going to be ready. And I, I expect the rest of the world will be too. Really good perspective. And we're, we'll have you on during the briar. We're not yeah. going anywhere all the way to Beijing, Paul. But also, Paul, time. when our agents call to do another game, Paul, you and I are ready. Okay. I'm in. Ready. You're, You're going to go live. Doing money this time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome to see you, Paul. Thanks for doing this. Me too. Thanks for doing yeah. this, guys. All right, call now uh, the moment a lot of people uh, have been waiting for, right? I mean, how is this a blast for the past? And I think to set up Mr. Gee Hemmings, we have perhaps the most memorable moment out of his career. Who can forget this? Let's look at the 1999 Last Rock semifinal. Here it is. Whoa! <laughs> tired of seeing that shot. How are you, my friend? I'm pretty good. I didn't know that. I didn't know that my son was playing curling too. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good, Guy. You taught him everything he knew, and then and then you wound up. That was the final. You lost to Jeff Stoughton, I think, after that, right? I don't. I don't remember that part. That, that didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. Um, listen, how about Team Quebec this year at the Scotties? Yeah, so far so good. You know, they're they've been playing pretty good. They got a couple of a uh, decent break, I guess, against P High. But uh, this afternoon they play a really solid game against one of the favorite uh, team Fleury's, and and I think they 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 made good shot. What I like, they made good takeout, a couple of double takeout, and made nice draws too. So. Often on a young team like this, they, they're going to be doing well on part of either take out, either draw a game. But this afternoon, they showed that they can play both sides of the game, which is really interesting. You, you know, Guy, uh, we see Lori. She's having so much fun. Uh, we were talking at the start of the show about these great Quebec curling personalities. Everybody was clamoring today about you being on the show. What is it about the the joie de vivre, the excitement you bring to the ice? Because everybody knew when Guy Hemmings was on the ice, there was a show about to unfold. Yeah, I used to say that we were used to play in front of nobody because curling is not as big in Quebec than it is uh, in the rest of the country. But uh, Laurie is playing in front of nobody and she still seems to enjoy enjoyed the, the moment as well. So I don't know, I guess it's part of our Latin blood or something like that. But uh, obviously for us to be uh, at a big stage like that, it's always exciting. It's always a treat and uh, something that we dream about. But uh, we look at the big guys from all across the country making a ton of, ton of big shots and when you have a chance to play against those, it's just so exciting. It's really difficult not to enjoy it. Mm. What would success for um, Quebec here at the Scotties do for curling in Quebec. I mean, we've always been looking sort of for that big win ever since, um, you know, Jim Ursel won the Briar. Um, yeah. What what could it do for the for the province? 
Yeah, I think I think the main thing would bring some media attention to the sport. You know, us uh, like myself, I work with RDS, the French version of TSN. We doing mostly hundred uh, percent of the game TSN is doing. We do it in French, which is pretty good for an amateur sport. You know, and not too many other amateur sport has a chance to have so much coverage. So RDS doing a very good job as far as the media is concerned in promoting the sport, but. When you talk about the written newspapers or other networks, they, they barely talk about curling. You know, uh, it's not a province where curling is a big sport. So when a, an athlete like or a team like that is able to establish himself or themselves as a, a front runner or have a chance to win something interesting, suddenly all the other media start to talk about it. And right. like anything else, when we start talking about it, people pay more attention. So it's going to be good for curling. It's going to be good for us at at RDS because we're going to be able to attract more viewers because everybody wants to see what she's going to do next. Can, can we go back to that winning shot for a second? <laughs> because I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'm from Saskatchewan. You were public enemy number one after that. <laughs> I against, didn't feel that much after I went back there. <laughs> <laughs> against uh, the, the, the friendly giant, Gerald Shimko. Um, is, is that one of the best moments on the ice for you? I mean, in that venue in Edmonton, the place was crazy, 15,000 people. Is that one of the best moments for you? Yeah, of course. And I had a chance to work many years after with Curling Canada and promoting curling. And we used that shot quite a bit to uh, true schools or any other uh, place that we talk about curling. And, and there was three things we, we say is, when we talk about, about curling is we want to watch the shot. I told the kids or the people, so we're going to watch a, a decent shot, an exciting shot. But don't pay attention about the fact that I made the shot, who missed the shot, but pay attention to uh, the the, t the teamwork. It's a really a teamwork shot. No, I just show it that the, with a perfect slide, but the... Uh... <laughs> perfect! <laughs> so as soon as, I let it, as soon as I let it go, everybody you in the building knew was there. Like, there's no doubt. I say, watch the, watch the teamwork, watch the reaction of the crowd, because uh, lots of people can't realize that people, would, it were more than 10,000 people in the stand that day, jumping and cheering cheering and yelling as it was the crowd and mostly pay attention to the reaction of the uh, Shimko teams. You know, uh, how many, how many, how often would you see a sport where the guy will give you a sincere mm -hmm. hug after, mm -hmm. after you beat, you break their dreams. So I think that shot was a good moment for me, but it was a good moment for curling, good moment to uh, show how great our sport is and, and our friendship could be established in this sport and all people could enjoy it and was a for for me it was exciting but i think it was a good moment for curling as well oh that was so well said yeah no wonder why curl canada hired you for that rocking the house tour right i mean you're you're yeah. so eloquent so beautiful yeah we 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 had fun with the crowd and we entertained with the crowd most of the time so i guess it was a big part of it yeah when you rewatch it does it look at the top of the house like you might be heavy yeah, but well, you know, like uh, it's it's kind of funny when you look at it today. Like uh, I don't know, twenty some years later, I don't know, I don't count. But now a draw to the pin is basically for those guys. Like uh, it's a routine shot. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. ice condition is better, the equipment, the sweeping equipment is better, so it's not a big deal anymore to draw the pin to a game. But uh, mm -hmm. even though it's uh, twenty some years ago, uh, back then and. Uh, and the pressure situation and uh, uh, make that, that shot very exciting because you, today you could see that drop the pin like a, maybe three or four times during a game. Uh, yeah. we, we, uh, we shot Sherry Anderson this afternoon in the game, uh, make a couple of good shots in the 9-10 to, to save the game basically, as good as this draw was. But it's always about the timing yeah. and do it at the right time and yeah. in front of so many people. Yeah, but Guy, no one was changing. I mean, not only has the broom become so lightweight, but nobody was changing head covers every single game. Like that was not done, right? So fresh heads make a massive difference, especially the magic heads of today. But anyhow. Yeah, yeah, we had the best sweeper at the time. Nobody knew about it. We had it. We had the best two best sweeper in the world at that time, and they did a great job. Yeah, they did. It was fun to watch it again. And fun to see you again. You've got to get on air. You got you got a broadcast coming up. Can we put up the board? What do you like moving forward, Guy, here at the Scotties? If we put up the board, maybe look at the standings. What do you like moving forward as a week goes on? Yeah, obviously, like uh, like everybody else, you, there's a two or three good team, uh, more established team, should I say, on every bracket. So I think they're going to go forward. Uh, uh, from the beginning, I think I'm paying more attention. Who's going to finish third and fourth on every bracket? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very looking very very good with, for Quebec because. Uh, 
she has a record of three and one, and she be she play uh, she play Manitoba and she play uh, Fleury's team already. So she's sitting very good to at least go to the next step. So that's what I do on every uh, from since the beginning. I'm checking for the third and fourth team that's going to get into the playoff. On, on the pool A, there's three stronger teams, so it's basically only one spot available. Uh, that's going to be between the two wild card teams. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I think you're wrong on that front. Not with Nova Scotia sitting there, Guy. <laughs> big win, yeah. Big win yesterday. Sorry about that, Colin. Yeah, yeah it was a big win. Got the two tough, tough to, you know, that she's got um, Ontario tonight, and I think she's got still Canada left to play too. So that's yeah, but it was a big win yesterday. They beat a good team and kept their chance alive, and they're going to be the hunt for the third or fourth spot. Isn't well. this, Guy, just the funnest time of the week, though? Even as a curler, Devin. You're looking at the standings going, they're going to beat that. That's going to be that. Okay, we're still alive, right? And it's <laughs> And you as long as John you're, you're saying, saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. Oh, yeah, well, I guess I guess as a fan, we do it. But we, we used to do it for so many years as a player. We're looking at the draw and who's going to play where, who's going to play against you, if this guy is lose, if you win this one. I guess it's still in our blood. We still do it all the time. And I really enjoy it. Almost enjoying as much as watching the game itself. Yeah. And the funny thing now, with only the top three going, you really can't, in this preliminary round, have too many losses before you move into the championship pool. Or you're dead uh, going in against the other pool, right? Because every team is going to could beat you. So Yeah, it's, it's true. You, know, you saw this afternoon uh, quickly, like uh, uh, Team Fleury, when they lost, they were upset. They were upset because they lost against Quebec. Nothing personal, but they knew they're going to carry that loss to the next round. And, and that loss against a team that they were supposed to beat on paper uh, might hurt them, might hurt their chance to be in, a, in the mm. final round. Yeah, I must say, I love this format so much where you cross over and meet the other pool. I mean, I know there's a big debate about it all the time, but to me, it creates a lot of drama. And it makes every game in the round robin so urgent, right? So you know, uh, well, well, I gotta go soon. But I think what I like the best about this format, uh, Colleen, I think is the fact that at the end you never have a game. You never have a game where a team. Let's say you have to. You have to hope that one team lose to the other one, and they're playing uh, UConn or they're playing the new level. But you know, it's gonna. Ha it's not gonna happen. But with this new format, it does not happen. All the team involved in the second round playing against a team who could beat them or they could exactly. beat. So it makes the second part of the tournament way more exciting. Absolutely. There was nothing more nerve-wracking than playing a team with nothing to lose. It was at the bottom. Yeah, of yeah. Exactly. It's, it's not fun for the team. We're expecting them to lose. It's not... Yeah. Did we freeze, Guy? Guy, it's so nice that you could join us today. He's on the air. Guy, so great to see you. Thanks for being on the show. Have a great show tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, for, then, don't forget the, the people who like curling in French. We're on RDS. So thanks for having me, guys. RDS. Have Absolutely. Awesome. Have a great <laughs> show. Yeah. Nice seeing All you. Right. Thank Take you. And, and your son that threw the rock. Oh, uh, yeah. He's a good curler, as you could see. His delivery is not that good, though. <laughs> well, uh, we'll say goodbye to Guy so you can do the show. But actually, Guy's delivery, now that he's gone, um, it's wonderful. <laughs> no, but we often think we have to throw exactly like Russ Howard or Brad Gushu, but um, it's the artists out there, like a Randy Furby delivery or um, John Epping or a, a Guy Hemmings, a little bit, you know, where you wouldn't kind of, you could technically pick it apart. John Epping's is probably I'm, 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 just, I'm, just letting you, I'm just letting you talk, <laughs> Colin. You're letting me dig a big, big hole. Do you want to talk about tonight's games, or did we let's, already? Do that? Let's get into it because we're 22 minutes away from tonight's draw. Get out, it classes in with Colleen. What have we got? Okay, so we've got Northwest Territories versus Wild Court Card Number Two. So that's Galusha versus Zacharias. Okay. Zacharias is really in a sort of. They're both in a must win at one yep. and two. Yep. Um, but I think Galusha's coming on. Wild Card Number Three, Peterson. She's had tough losses in those three losses. She's, she's been in she's the. Been, Alberta. I'm curious whether or not Alberta, how they recover from last night's loss. Right. But, yeah. Uh, Northern Ontario Burns still alive with two losses against UConn, so that should be a win for them not to write UConn off. And Ontario home at three and zero against Nova Scotia's Jill Brothers. Um, that's a, that's Jill really game. has to win. That's a big game tonight, isn't it? It's a big game for Nova Scotia, and it's a big. And as Guy just said. You don't even want to carry one loss over, and you don't want a loss you don't think you should have had. And my hunch is Ontario probably thinks, you know, this is a game that they can and should win, especially when you look at their statistics. They're playing extremely well, Ontario. 
when you look at their plus minus for the teams in percentages, they're doing extremely well. So they're on fire. They, well, they look good. And speaking of Ontario, Rachel Homan, eight months pregnant. She's going to be on the show tomorrow night. So that's what you have to look forward to. Uh, settle in for tonight. Enjoy the curling. This is fun because yeah. this is when things really start ramping up, Colleen. And we're going to yeah. take it. We're going to take you all the way to the finish line. I was going to say, Devin, for you, every day it ramps up. Okay. You love drama. For you, drama is the opening end. Let's just be honest. Okay? You're right. As soon as the first rock was thrown, it was yeah. dramatic. So, yeah. uh, hey, uh, speaking of which, drama, we've got a big show Saturday, Curling Day in Canada, and we want to include everyone from coast to coast. So send us your pics and videos. I mean, some of these backyard rinks, Colleen, are better than rinks that you and I have played in. Look at this scene. So send yeah. us them. You can tweet, you can email, do all the things. I'm all over social media. So send it. We want to include you. We're having a huge show on Saturday. That's the last day of the championship round. And let's reflect. Huger, huger than this show that we just did. Even well, bigger. Yeah, for sure. They're all big. They're all dramatic, Colleen. They are. Devin, your family's one looks amazing. Okay, we got to go, right? We got to get our snacks ready. We got to go. Get tweeting. I got to walk the dog first before I sit down with my all right. on. All right. Have a great night, Call. Have a great night, okay. Berlin fans. Good night. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks Good girl. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks, Sophie, producer. Thanks, Sophie.